Where can I afford to live? That is what an entire generation of young renters in London are asking. I am attempting to find what increasingly seems like the impossible, an affordable but decent place to live in the capital. And I am speaking to the young workers struggling to do the same. This is what everything looked like. I've met people who felt they had to trade their privacy for cheaper rent. Is this your living room? Is this your bedroom? And I've met people who are struggling to stay afloat because over half their pay goes to their landlord. I'm, I'm left with nothing. Recent research found that 80% of private sector jobs created across the UK post-recession are in London. So unsurprisingly, people are flocking to the capital. Competition for a room is fierce. Hi, I'm ringing from spareroom.co.uk about the property that you had, the room in Stoke Newington. Is that still available? The company policy was to only give people viewings who were ready to make a decision there and then on the spot. And if they had other viewings, then they wouldn't allow them to view it. Housing charity Shelter says the number of complaints made by private sector tenants has risen by nearly 50% in the last 12 years. Justine got in touch to tell us about her problems. She lives in a block of flats owned by just one buy-to-let landlord, which may mean the landlord has even greater control over rent, evictions and maintenance of the whole block. Bathroom. And this is the bathroom? <laughs> yeah. This is what everything looked like before we cleaned it up. And what's it like to shower in here? Smelly. This is a kind of smelly flat, actually. The showering's worse because we don't have a boiler. Uh, or we do, but it only heats up something like three kettles worth of hot water. We can't even have our bed touching the yeah. wall. We've had to sort of orientate our bedroom backwards. It feels much colder, so it feels like the temperature's dropped. We have to have this heating on in the evening. It's incredibly cold because we have no insulation. The wall is this much concrete. Um, and there was central heating. Um, just down here, there was clearly a heater, but because of the clause in the contract that says that if there is heating provided, it has to be maintained. Uh, the landlord took it out. And so now we have a gap where the heating used to be. So the landlord took out your radiator so they didn't have to provide heat. <laughs> yeah, isn't that crazy? Despite the mold, Justine is just happy to live in a place she can call home. But how has it come to this, when young renters can live in a property that has had the heaters taken out to keep the cost down, yet they consider this to be a dream? It seems the standard of housing many of us are living in doesn't quite match the price. The average rent for a room in London is £639 a month and rising nearly five times faster than wages. This means people are doing everything they can to keep costs down, including squeezing more people in at the risk of overcrowding. This is Islington in North London, where space is at an absolute premium. I've come to meet another young renter who in just over two and a half years has spent over 20 grand in rent and she doesn't even have her own room. Is this your living room? Is this uh, your bedroom? I have a bit of both, a bit of everything. I sleep there and then communal living everywhere else. Um, just a nice dining table, the house TV. House TV. Everyone's welcome to this bit. Okay. This is my bedroom. This is just a mattress? It is, yeah. So, so you consider living in the, in the sitting room to be a part of city living? <laughs> yeah, I think it is. I think it's a part of being young and I'd much rather live here in the sitting room um, and be living my own life than living at home at my parents. With the cost of a house here being 15 times the average salary, this sort of student style renting will not be temporary but a defining feature of a generation. Hello, I'm Simeon. For one group of young people living in the shadow of the Olympic Stadium in Stratford, communal living is a solution to the housing crisis. We're 20 odd people, so we've got the two kitchens, a cooker here, a cooker around the corner. Well, this is like our dining room, as you can see. I'll show you some, let me show you some of the rooms in here. This is definitely one of our more bigger rooms. Okay. So this kind of, this kind of size is set aside for um, two people sharing a couple. How much, how much does it cost? This one is 820 a month. That's all your bills included as well. Could you show me what a single room looks like? Yeah, yeah. I've got, let me show you the, one of the cheaper ones we have. This is Chikozi. Hey, how's it going? Nice to meet you. And so this is the single room? Yeah, this is pretty standard size. What does this space like, contribute like, to, your, to your life? I really like it. I like the architecture and even though I don't have any windows. 
um, being cl so close to the Olympic site um, and being able to do whatever I like with, with, with the space. A big problem for this generation is buying is out of the question. So we're looking at the possibility of flat shares with strangers long into the future. That's why there's demand for events like this, where potential flatmates can meet for the first time and bid for houses together. At this event in East London, up to 100 young professionals are gathered to find someone to live with. It's called speed flatmating, very similar to speed dating, because in London, finding somewhere to live can be just as difficult as finding love. Everyone I met here had renting nightmares to share. Basically, I pay about £400 a month. After paying my rent, uh, bills, I'm left with nothing. So um, it's very difficult to save. By the end of the week, I'm usually having to borrow off uh, family members, etc. I would say the conditions are very poor. It's a very, it's not a derelict flat, but it's in very, very poor. There's an infestation of cockroaches in the kitchen and my landlord refuses to do anything about it. You're fighting a battle with them all the time. All the trends point to a difficult future for Generation Rent. We are now set to become the first postal generation to do worse than our parents.